We are here at Air Venture Oshkosh. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Robert Beisler this morning of Aerodrome Airplanes. First, we got to start with an impressive number. We're standing in front of a handsome airplane, but how many total do you produce these days? We do 21 different unique World War One and antique aircraft replicas. 21 airplanes. That's got to be up there somewhere in the high category of any one company producing that many models. That's very cool. And they are all these World War One replica airplanes, are they? Well, uh, all except for two. We have two ultra that meet the ultralight criteria in our Dream Classic and Dream Fantasy, but the other 19 aircraft are specific to World War One. Okay, so by that implication, then I can infer that these are experimental amateur built airplanes, Robert, is that right? That's correct. They are experimental amateur built and they all qualify in the light sport category. Okay, so we're standing in front of one of them here. What do we got right here? Tell me just a little bit about this particular one of your 21 airplanes. This is the Aerodrome Aeroplanes full scale Newport 17 replica. The Newport 17. Newport 17, okay. yeah. It was an originally designed and built uh, for the movie Flyboys. So this is one of the actual Flyboys aircraft that's been retrofitted now with the, with the Rotec radio. I see. Okay, what engine did it have on it for the movie? It originally had a Volkswagen engine. Ah, okay. Was that be, trying to be authentic to what it was then? Just due to the time frame, we had to. Ah, I see. Okay. That. Now, now that these engines are available, we retro these aircraft. They probably would have liked this one to begin with, because this is one of those yes. round radial engines. This is this is the proper engine for the airplane. Unfortunately, at the time, we just didn't have the opportunity to get this engine in the airplane sure. for the movies. Sure. Movie company demands. I understand yep. that a bit. How many movies have your airplanes been involved in, Robert? Uh, we've got two movies now, in the, uh, Fly Boys and Amelia, and then uh, we've done the reality TV show uh, Mad Scientist, some of the aircraft have been featured in as well. Pretty cool. I'll bet you that did some stuff for sales, did it? That was fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah we get some interesting contacts. I'll bet. So how many like airplanes that. have you got, not just how many do you produce, but how many are flying out there? We have approximately 75 aircraft flying in the market. And how many kits have you sold? Uh, approximately 500. 500. So you've got a uh, good many, 400 and some, in various stages in various of production. Stages of what does it take to build an airplane like this? Uh, typically Time. about four to 500 man hours to complete air, uh, one of the full scale aircraft. And when you do some of our three quarter scale aircraft, it's around the 300 hour mark on those. 300 hours, That's that seems pretty brief for what I'm looking at. I see quite a bit of just covering work alone, which puts some people off. Do you offer any way that, to hasten that for them? Do you have well, partial kits or anything that are? We do uh, builder's assist where customers can come in our shop and uh, we'll, we'll assist you in building the airplane. Typically in one day, we have the entire fuselage framed. On a one second, day, is that right? Yeah, one day. And a second day, we could have all the tail feathers built and installed on the airplane. So our kits are pretty complete. You know, it has all welded yes. parts, machine parts, all gusset plates are pre-cut, all the castings are machined and ready to be installed. So, so what looks like an all-wood airplane is not an all-wood airplane. There is no wood in the airplane other than something like the instrument panel or dummy up struts. I mean, I can see, I'm looking over your shoulder here, so I see a strut that I could tell this close is not wood, but from a little bit further back, it sure looks like wood. So you're trying to recreate the image, but using modern materials to do that, is that we right? We want all modern materials, modern safety, modern performance, engines and systems dressed to look like an old aircraft. So the fun of yesteryear with the advantages of today. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, uh, looking more at the engine on here, that we've got this nice round radial engine on it, uh, give me just a couple of the basic facts. We don't want all the stuff because we want people to go to your website and look for more, but tell me a little bit about this big old engine that we see up here. This is the Rotec Radio R2800. Uh, which stands for 2,800 cubic or cc's in this case. 2,800 cc. Engines. That's so that makes it a CCs. pretty big engine as engines go. Well, yeah. For cubic displacement. For cubic. Well, typically you're talking cubic inches. This is CCs. ah, true, right? Okay. So therefore, it's a little bit smaller. But this typical engine weighs about 240 pounds installed and it'll produce 110 horsepower, which is really the sweet spot for this this type of aircraft. Is that right? About what this particular one needs. Correct. Now, obviously, an engine of that size is not going to work in your two ultralight models. Correct. What do you use in the ultralight model? Just the typical road taxes, 447s, 503s. Okay. And obviously there are smaller aircraft and lighter and able to operate all right on those power sources? That's correct. Excellent. You also have the, the is it the Eindecker that will qualify as an ultralight? We have a specific uh, example of the Eindecker we, we built for the uh, new UK laws that came out here a few years back. It's called a single seat deregulation. So we've gone in and optimized that design, thinning down a few things, non-structural things like firewalls and stuff, where we were able to to get that aircraft in the ultralight category with uh, with a four-stroke engine. So we can run 116 to 118 pound four-stroke engine and still make ultralight criteria with it. Correct. You know, it's pretty interesting. You mentioned Britain because every time I go to an aviation museum in the United States, 
I, I think about half of the people there must be from Britain. They show a really keen interest in the older aspects of aviation, so that must be a good market for you. It is. We, we sell a lot of aircraft in the European market. Uh, you know, World War One was in their front yard. You know, and, uh, <laughs> the 100th anniversary of World War One is coming up right now, so there's a lot of interest ah, in, specifically in the European theater. Well, stuff. that'll probably help sales a little bit more. I hope so. You've given us a lot of information here, Robert, but there's got to be a bunch more with 21 airplanes. We couldn't obviously cover all of it. Where would we want to go on the website, since that's where folks are watching, uh, to get more information about your company? Our website is aerodromeaeroplanes.com, and it's unique spelling A-I-R-D-R-O-M-E-A-E-R-O-P-L-A-N-E-S. -E -E yeah, normally we associate aerodrome with aerodrome, so Correct, yeah. kind of reverse yeah. the order there a little bit. Correct, yeah. The, the aerodrome was the old field, and then the aeroplanes is the old way of referring to airplanes. So ah, yes. Airfield, old aeroplanes. Well, I think that's pretty cool. Some really pretty airplanes that appeal to a lot of folks here. You can get more information on their website about all their products. You can get more about all kinds of light aircraft on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for watching today.